Hello everyone and welcome to the Now Foods monthly webinar series. My name is Susan Velakis and I'm the Training Development Coordinator for our online education program, Now Productology. If you have questions during the presentation, just click on the little chat bubble that you see on your screen, type your question, and send it. And we will respond directly to you by email within 24 hours. And finally, about an hour or so after the presentation, you'll receive an email with a link to the recorded copy of this presentation so you can use it for replay or to share it with your staff. So let's get on with the show. Today's presentation will focus on the science behind phosphatidylserine, specifically the trademarked ingredient sharp phosphatidylserine, which is used in several now products. Our guest speaker today is Eric Capio. Eric is the technical sales manager for IFF Health, where he works with organizations in the food, beverage, and dietary supplement industries to help bring compelling new nutritional products to market. Throughout his career, Eric has worked to improve the health of both adults and children by translating the latest advancements in nutrition research into substantiated messaging and product innovation. Previously, Eric held roles in nutrition science at Wyeth Consumer Healthcare and also in nutrition science and advocacy, sales, and marketing at DSM Nutritional Products. Eric holds a PhD in biochemical and molecular nutrition from Tufts University, and he is also a registered dietitian. So with that, please join me in welcoming Eric Capio for his presentation on sharp phosphatidylserine. Welcome, Eric. Thank you. Thanks for having me, uh, and welcome to everyone. I'm really looking forward to getting the chance to chat with everyone. Uh, so I am with a company called IFF Health. Uh, we are a rapidly evolving uh, company in the food and dietary supplement industry. Uh, and recently, for those of you who uh, may have noticed, we did just have a, a recent merger with our friends over at DuPont Nutrition and Biosciences. Um, so this merger is, is fairly fresh. It just happened in February of this year, February 1st of 2021. Uh, and this is a really exciting time to be with the company because we have expanded beyond our uh, original focus of some specialty ingredients along with fragrances and flavors, which of course is what the, the two Fs in IFF stand for. And now with uh, thanks to our friends from DuPont, we have access to a lot more uh, really fun and innovative products. Uh, so our ingredient, uh, our ingredient division, which is called IFF Health, uh, focuses on four main areas, probiotics, uh, plant extracts and powders, specialty ingredients, including the Sharp PS product, which we'll talk about today, and some prebiotics. So really cool time to be involved with the company, and I'm really happy to be here uh, to be able to talk about Sharp PS. So before we get into that, let's talk a little bit about the overall cognitive health, brain health market uh, in the U.S. today. If we ask consumers, um, what is the meaning of health? How do you define that? What is healthy to you? The most common answer across all age groups from Generation Z to baby boomers is mental well-being is defined as their number one attribute of health, according to Euromonitor data. That's reflected in the dietary supplement industry overall. The brain health category in the US is about a billion dollar category last year in 2020. Um, and of course, this uh, this has seen a lot of growth in recent years. I mean, just in the last four years or so, you've seen a 22% increase in product launches uh, for products making brain health claims in the U.S. alone. And when you ask supplement consumers, what health benefit do you not know much about, but you really have an interest in learning more? Brain health and mental health are the top two answers given by consumers. So. Bottom line here, this is a big category and it's a growing category and it's one that has a lot of consumer interest. So what, from a nutrition standpoint, can we do to help address some of these concerns and help improve the brain health of consumers? Well, first let's take a look at the brain overall. and What is it made of? Now, from a weight perspective or a structural perspective, roughly half of the weight of the brain is made up of lipids. And of course, there's many classes within that, but one of the major classes is what's called phospholipids. Um, these are essential for two main roles, uh, namely structural roles, again, making up that physical uh, framework of the brain, uh, but also as, um, 
as intermediaries and signaling systems. So they're carrying messages or aiding in the carrying of messages um, from neuron A to neuron B. Now of those uh, phosphatidylserine or PS, because phosphatidylserine is a bit of a mouthful, uh, PS is one of those major uh, phospholipid components. This is very highly concentrated in the brain. Um, like, most, uh, like most lipids and, and phospholipids in general, they play very important roles in cell signaling. And in particular, how this manifests uh, for you is that this is required for specific cognitive processes such as memory and learning. Now, there's a lot of things that can impact the activity of these fatty acids, but one thing is the fatty acid tail. So depending on what that phospholipid is bound to, the lipid part of that, um, that can impact the overall activity uh, of the product itself. Now here, hopefully my animations come through here. Um, what you'll see is this is a, a bit of a simplified version of how this works. In essence, in the brain is really just kind of a, a game of, you could think of it as, as hot potato in a sense, right? Some thought or some message is gonna go across from one neuron on the left-hand side and it's gonna send out some chemical messengers. It's gonna jump across the synapse here into your second um, into your second neuron, which then carries or propagates that signal from one neuron to the next and on and on down the line until it gets to whatever that specific endpoint is. And this is what's called cell-to-cell -cell communication. And this is how phosphatidylserine specifically functions. This helps to aid this process by aiding in that uh, specific chemical messenger being sent across uh, and controlling that to make sure that there's an efficient uh, process occurring and that your specific cognitive function is occurring as intended, right? This is what's known as, oh, there we go. This is what's known as signal transduction. As it then carries to the next uh, neuron, it then continues to move on. And as I had mentioned, how does this manifest uh, in terms of your day-to-day? -day? How do you see this? Uh, well, what you generally see is that this is specifically involved in certain cognitive functions, such as memory, learning, and attention. And this is where most of the clinical data for phosphatidylserine tends to be focused on. The idea being that if there's more of this messenger available, you've got the ability to control uh, these cognitive processes a bit better, and therefore uh, this will improve in your day-to-day -day living. So there have been uh, a lot of trials done on phosphatidylserine overall. Over 30 published clinical trials are available just on PS and cognition alone. And there's a number of other specific health benefit areas, which we'll get to in a little bit. Um, but I do want to take a moment to discuss uh, the data on PS and brain health. So this is just a snapshot. This is just a couple of studies that I had just sort of chosen to demonstrate. I mean, a lot of the studies will range from roughly, you know, roughly three months to you know three to four months and up. Um, they're looking at folks, generally speaking, uh, more advanced in age, adults and seniors specifically. There are some data in children, we'll show that in a little bit, but generally speaking, as you sort of advance along the age spectrum, there tends to be more data with respect to PS and brain health. Most of the studies are designed in a very similar way. You're looking at PS or placebo, and your endpoint is going to be some cognitive battery test. And all these cognitive batteries tend to be a bit of an alphabet soup. You can see like a good example on the bottom right here. Um, they all have uh, you know, uh, acronyms like MMSE, mini mental state exam, and so on and so on. And they all generally will mention or, or measure a bunch of different, uh, different endpoints related to brain health, such as memory, attention, learning, et cetera. So let's dive deeper into one of these studies. Um, so in this particular study, what was measured here, this was an evaluation of uh, PS on elderly subjects with some mild memory impairment. And what they did was they took folks and randomized them to receive either a placebo, of course, uh, 100 milligrams or 300 milligrams a day of RPS product uh, for about six months. Another interesting thing about this study was no matter which group you were in, placebo or one of the PS groups, you stop treatment after six months. And three months later, uh, the same uh, cognitive battery was given again. And there was a number of different, as I mentioned, these alphabet soup exams, uh, and you were examined for endpoints such as um, memory, learning, attention, et cetera. So what's really cool here is that you can see Particularly among the volunteers who had the lowest baseline testing scores, you do see significant improvement in overall cognitive function. 
um, what you can see is that not only did this benefit increase linearly over time as you were taking PS, but that benefit continued, in some cases even increased, uh, after the PS supplementation stopped. So the, beta, uh, the bottom line here is that you do see significant improvements in overall cognitive function and memory as it relates to PS uh, supplementation, which is really cool. And that benefit even uh, extends beyond the point in which uh, you stop taking the product. As I'd mentioned, there are a lot of data as it relates to uh, folks who are more advanced in the age spectrum, but that's not to say there's nothing in children and adolescents. Um, here's one example where uh, younger children uh, age 17 to 18 were given either 100 milligrams of uh, phosphatidylserine or placebo for just over a month and uh, given a computerized cognitive assessment um, for memory. And what you do see again is that, again, there's a significant improvement in overall cognitive function uh, among students, uh, high school age students who are taking a uh, PS product. So again, Benefits are observed across the age range. Now, what's especially neat about PS is that um, there are a lot of brain health products out in the market, but one thing I think that is particularly compelling about this is that phosphatidylserine is actually the only nutritional ingredient that has an FDA-approved qualified health claim for cognitive function. So specifically, that claim reads that consumption of PS may reduce the risk of dementia or cognitive dysfunction in the elderly. Now, of course, this is a qualified health claim, so there are uh, some additional notes from the FDA. But nevertheless, I think this is a, a super important and compelling point because in all of nutrition, in all of dietary supplements, there's only a handful of products that have either qualified or authorized health claims. Phosphatidylserine is the only product that has a qualified health claim or a uh, health claim of any sort uh, as it relates to brain health and cognitive function. So um, a really cool feather in its cap. But that's not to say brain health is the only benefit uh, of phosphatidylserine. There all have been a lot of different um, endpoints examined for PS. Um, cognitive health, of course, which you talk about in mood, um, even things like skin health uh, and sports nutrition. There's been over 60 clinical trials in total that we're aware of uh, on PS uh, across these different health benefit areas. And I want to dig into one in particular. So this is a really neat study, and the reason I say that is because for those of you who've been around um, the nutrition world for some time, you will see that there are no shortage of sports nutrition studies out there, but I will say that golf-specific sports nutrition studies are fairly rare, um, which is why this one always, uh, always interests me. I just think this is a really cool, uh, unique feature. Um, so it's a relatively small study, but I think it's, it's, it's pretty unique and still compelling in what they... Uh, and also, I think, exemplary of the way uh, PS works, right? I mean, if you think of what sport, what, you know, athletic sport uses your brain more than anything and requires, you know, calmness, attention, coordination, um, arguably golf is probably in that top tier, right? Of course, I think athletes of any sport would probably say theirs is, but uh, I, will, I will argue that as someone who's terrible at golf, uh, that this is probably one of the more important ones. So what they did was they took a group of young male golfers and they gave them either PS or a placebo for just about a month and a half or so, and they measured the, the ball flight path and they measured the amount of stress they had during tee off. And what you can see is that the folks who were given uh, PS, you can see a significant improvement in the number of correct, uh, correct hits, meaning uh, in this um, kind of middle column on the left-hand side here, the three black dots, demonstrating they were going either straight or just sort of off path a little bit. Um, you can see a significant improvement in the number of correct hits um, in the group taking phosphatidylserine. Overall, the group that uh, was taking phosphatidylserine also had a lower uh, post-test amount of perceived stress, although this did not reach statistical significance, but arguably that's because it's a relatively small sample size. But nevertheless, I thought this was a super interesting little finding. Um, so there are additional data uh, available for sports nutrition, but um, this is one that I just find personally interesting. Another thing about Sharp PS is um, that there are multiple sources available. Generally speaking, most of the PS uh, material out there comes from soy, uh, but if you're a consumer who's looking to avoid soy for whatever reason, we also do have a sunflower-based material uh, called Sharp PS Green, which is also found in some Now Foods products. So if you are looking to avoid soy, uh, we do have the sunflower version available. 
So to wrap up, I will uh, leave with a couple key points here. Number one is that brain health is a large and growing segment of the dietary supplement industry. And this is largely fueled by uh, consumer interest in the space. PS in particular plays an important role in maintaining brain health and cognitive function across the lifespan. Uh, again, lots of data in older folks and some data in uh, younger folks. Um, and most of the clinical trial data that is out there commonly shows benefits as it relates to memory. PS is the only product in the nutrition landscape with an FDA approved qualified health claim for the prevention of cognitive decline. And there are lots of additional benefits as well, ranging from mood health to skin health and even sports nutrition, golf performance, uh, and more. So with that, thank you so much for your time. Uh, I can certainly be reached anytime, and I would love uh, to talk more about PS anytime anyone's interested. So thank you very much. Well, thank you, Eric, for some excellent information. Um, I know the older I get, I'm happy to know that there is help available. <laughs> um, and, you know, it's interesting, uh, you were saying, as we're seeing this jump in the industry for brain health products, that is kind of something new. We haven't seen, or I haven't recognized um, it being so prevalent over the past few years as it is now. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, I think generally when people think of nutrition, they think of the the health benefit areas that are sort of most classically associated with it. I mean, think heart health, right? And I think that's arguably sort of the poster child for this relationship. But, you know, I would think especially that in this last year and a half or so, as we all sit here remotely in this COVID world, it, you know, it, I think anybody can say that this has been a more stressful, you know, year and a half than most, right? And so I think that that hasn't been lost on the market. I think that consumers have been driven to try and find solutions that help them feel a little bit more at ease with just the volatility of the day-to-day -day world. And I think products um, in the dietary supplement market have really pushed themselves to sort of meet that need. And I, I would argue that phosphatidylserine is also one of those products as well. Mm -hmm. Especially, like you said, with the with the COVID, um, you know, that mental health that just yes, uh, there's there's such a rise because we went from 160 miles an hour to boom everything stopped and that was a hard adjustment to make. Exactly, I think every single person, no matter who you are, your life has has probably changed <laughs> in a major way over this last year and a half. And I think with any change, good, bad, or indifferent, comes stress. You know, comes yep. a desire to improve mental well-being. So. Absolutely. I think that's there's no arguing that's that's a, a part of that trend. Mm -hmm. And that was a very interesting uh, study finding on the golf. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, again, I, I bring that up because I just think it's so unique. Right. You, you generally will see, you know, running nutrition studies around running faster and jumping higher, as it were. Um, but you very rarely see a lot of attention paid to golf. And I think it makes a lot of sense in the context of the ingredient as well. I mean, you think of a place where stress and distractions and attention really are super, super important and critical. Um, golf is arguably one where you're going to see that. So um, I'm not saying it's going to turn me into Tiger Woods, say, but I think um, anything, uh, anything can help, certainly. And I think it's, mm -hmm. uh, it's certainly an, an interesting finding scientifically as well. Absolutely. Yeah, I can't wait to tell my son-in-law. <laughs> <laughs> well, what, and where, as we, as we go forward, as we look into the future, where is the research on phosphatidylserine headed? It's a really good question. I think there's two big areas where uh, you're going to start seeing uh, more interest and attention paid to PS. So one, I mentioned this a couple times during the talk, but um, you know, sort of the best and worst thing, I guess, about PS is that most of the data that's out there tends to be in folks a little bit further along in the age spectrum. But that's not the same. I mean, the brain is, is growing, you know, most and needs help the most uh, in the first 20 years of life. That's when the majority of the work is being done from a structural perspective, right? Um, so I think there's going to be a lot more data, and I know for a fact that there's going to be a lot more data on younger children uh, in particular. Um, this is something of an area of active interest for, for us. Um, this is an area that we will continue to invest in uh, 
um, from a research perspective as well with some upcoming clinical trials, which I'm, I'm sworn to secrecy for, otherwise I would tell you more. And the second area where I think there's going to be some more interest is, and I had mentioned this uh, also very early in the talk, is around what the, the structure of the specific PS product you're talking about. So again, that fatty acid tail can influence um, the activity of the molecule overall. So um, we do have a line of products uh, where uh, the phosphatidylserine is actually bound to DHA or to cosaxanoic acid, which is an omega-3 product, uh, commonly also seen on the market for brain health. Um, so we have uh, some early, uh, early clinical data demonstrating some benefits as it relates to uh, this combination PS-DHA product, and I expect that there will be some more uh, research on that as something of a, an updated form um, of PS. So if I had to guess where the two, my, if I could look in my crystal ball where PS research is going, I would say uh, younger ages uh, for one and this PS, PS DHA form for two. Okay. Well, I look forward to that research as I have uh, four grandchildren. So Family. if you need any help with the research, I've, I've got them here. So There you go. Get some <laughs> subjects. All right. That's right. That's right. Well, thank you so much once again for an excellent presentation and some great information and some uh, great research to look forward to in the future. Thanks so much uh, for being a part of our webinar presentation and thank you to everyone who joined us today. We'll see you next month.